Welcome to another edition of After the Whistle. I'm fully clothed. This guy over here. The, 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 <laughs> <laughs> he, I guess he want to show everybody that he work out. He show oh, man. It definitely was not the case. <laughs> One color you don't wear to the show is green, apparently. So <laughs> that's why I'm like this. He looked like he just got out. <laughs> Also, he did this. We got this. This might be, uh, I don't know if y'all can see it. Oh, you can see a little bit. After the whistle, uh, yeah, just something. This might be a new though. after the whistle logo. I don't know. But y'all can't see it, so. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell you color. Let's get right into it. NFL. We got a whole bunch of NFL stuff to talk about. But first, we're going to talk about this fallout from the Rock Nation collaboration with the NFL. It seems like a lot of people were for it. A lot of people were against it. Certain players spoke out about it. You know, we had Eric Reed saying this was a money grab for Jay Z. We had he also said like if if he's gonna do this, so um, how come Kaepernick doesn't have a job or given the opportunity to have a job? It just seems there's like a lot of conflicting things going on, and it's and then you got Freddie Gibbs going on IG on his IG story and saying F Colin Kaepernick because of the pushback people are giving Jay Z. It's like all right, NFL, this is. Congratulations. <laughs> this is what y'all wanted. Honestly, that was kind of like the move. It seemed like they were making, kind of making it a little messy. But Jay-Z's doing what's best for Jay-Z. If he's getting some, some bread out of it, you got to understand we're all individuals on this planet. We're all trying to get the, make the best living possible. So you might not agree with people's moves, but that's just how it is. I would say just give it an opportunity to see what, what pans out of it. You can't just put Colin Kaepernick in the paperwork. You know what I mean? Let Jay-Z do some things and to see if he Colin, Colin gets the opportunity, which he should. I think the, the issue most people are having, it's kind of taken away, distracting from the actual issues of the social, the social justice that, you know, that that's what the players were advocating, some of the mm -hmm. players were advocating. It seems like the NFL is just getting behind a, a big hip-hop mogul just to see, like, to show face, like, hey, we got Jay-Z here, so, you know, we're taking it seriously, but nobody knows what exactly the deal they have in place, what they're going to do. I mean, I, I said before, I still think they're just trying to get Beyonce to do the Super Bowl <laughs> halftime show. That's I'm sticking with that. They're trying to get Beyonce for that Super Bowl halftime whoa, show because they need her. Well, we all know Beyonce's a great entertainer. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? We know that, and she has a lot of fans, a lot of ratings. But, you know, it's that's tough to say what they're doing, but yeah. we all know the NFL needs some form of representation from ethnic backgrounds, yeah. personally, because you don't have much. Especially so, the ownership side. Yeah, exactly. And picking Jay-Z is definitely a smart move. I would just say just let things kind of play out and see what happens, because Jay-Z's a smart man. He's pretty slick, too, so... It might look like he might be in Uncle Tom at this point in time, might, but then, so. you know, he might have something in the back door for him, but, you know, that's how J.J. kind of moves, like. Yeah, you know, the Brooklyn folks, you know, they're kind of yeah. a little shady. So, yeah, so he might have something up his sleeve. Yeah, I'm, I, that's why I, I haven't really commented on it. I'm, right, I'm waiting for everything to play out, but it seems like the, some of the, you know, the players that are upset about it, it's because it just seems like this is more of a money grab than and the NFL is just trying to distract from the real social the social issues that the play has been talking about for years. Um, I mean, we could get right into it. The Dolphins owner, Stephen Ross, he just stepped down from his, uh, he just stepped down from the NFL Social Justice Committee because one of the players, Kenny Stills, called him out, you know, for um, fundraising for the president. You know, he's a avid 45 supporter. So, and that's just like a conflict right there because you got mm -hmm. a whole, you got your players, you got one player in particular who just, you know, it doesn't stand for anything 45 says or does. And then when you're when the team owner is out there supporting him and fundraising for him, it's just like, and then you want to do a social justice. You want to be on the social justice committee, but you're advocate, but you support a guy who just. Too. Well, times are changing. People can't hide behind certain things anymore, and they're getting exposed. Yeah. Also, too, that's why you shouldn't really mix sports with politics, honestly, because it just gets messy because everybody's view is different. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I don't really care if people's political views. You like what you like. It is what it is. Like, yeah. So, but in this climate, yeah. it's just yeah. like the person you support, and it's like, bruh, this guy is not, you know, this guy is not in support of people that look like us or gender equality or nothing. He's just... Well, trying to bring it back to what, how things used to be. And that's what I mean about times are changing yeah. because the athletes have more of a say. 
You know what I mean? They have more power because they affect more people. Yeah. Social media has made it so people can feel these athletes and what their struggles are, what they might have went through, and what society's going through as well, how they yeah. connect. So these people, they they can't hide anymore. So they're going to get exposed. That's why they're stepping down. So he obviously he feels guilty in a certain way. So it's, he looked in the mirror, and that's what a lot of people in those positions need to do as well. Personally. What's also interesting is a lot of the NFL supporters, uh, NFL owners that support. 45 they when when he wanted to buy the Buffalo Bills they all didn't want him in that in their club because they know what everything that comes with with him and they just know the sto- they just know they this guy can't be in our club but you know they still they'll still support him it's like you guys didn't want him to be a owner in the league but you'd still go out to support him because it's like and that that's that's kind of the tricky thing for me it's like so How you guys long? knew his character, his personality, just his whole makeup. But, you know, some of y'all will st- still go out of your way to support him. You know what they say. I learned in the little sales job I had in Houston, very small, very short. You can't sell loyalty and ignorance. <laughs> That's all I got to say about those people. Yeah. So, And you can tell, like, you don't want people part of your club, but you want to still support him. That's stupid. Yeah. So don't why would support somebody you don't want to be part of your club? It just doesn't make no sense. Yeah. And that's just dumb, and I can't understand that. I can't understand so, that either. And before whatever. we move on, too, be uh, quickly back to the first topic about um, about the NFL and, and this whole Colin Kaepernick thing. So we had the the crazy thing too about that is that you got people going on TV just saying just saying the most outrageous things and I don't get how some of these executives could just let these guys get away with it like you got Marcellus Wiley he goes on TV questions Colin Kaepernick's blackness then he um then he he says his girlfriend it has been doing his, her black appropriation card has been revoked she's been black appropriate she's been black appropriate but I mean she's black herself so it's it's like it, it's like he it's like the flip he's like switch because well, a year ago, he wasn't saying all this, and now he's saying all this, uh, saying only reason Colin Kaepernick started this whole thing because he saw his career was fading. This was a way to keep him in the spotlight. And it's just like, it seems like someone's in his ear saying that because it's like, mm-hmm. bro, how you going to go from supporting it, supporting what he was doing to now this? It's like I'm, I feel like people on, that, on those stages switch up like that. Somebody's in their pocket, in their yeah. ear. So it's one of those things. It's like, man, you better get on board, or you yeah. might get pulled from this show, or get sent down yeah. to Fox Net, or something. And certain stations you don't want to be on if you've been yeah. at the height. So yeah. you know how it goes, and and you don't know what happens behind behind closed doors. And it's Especially crazy because it's like, I just don't get some of these executives. How I mean, granted, it's television. Sometimes sometimes people say things for entertainment. Maybe they don't mean it, or it's, or it's for shock value. But it's just like. And you, everybody needs to be a little more responsible what they say because some things people just say it's like, bro, okay, come on now. Well, we live in a world where people use epic as like something to, to describe like a party or something. Mm. Epic is something that like happens like once in like existence. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean human existence, like not a lifetime existence of yeah. people. But like, and shock value isn't shock value anymore. You have to always cross more lines. Yeah. So what was shocking 10, 15 years ago is no. normal now. Yeah, so that's why they always trying to push the envelope deeper and deeper until they realize it just it's getting ridiculous like where where is the line at some point oh, there, there, there is none there is none that's the sad thing uh, all right back to some more craziness antonio brown this guy i don't file he filed another grievance against the nfl <laughs> my guy <laughs> yo this is all for over a helmet i'm like bro come on now come on now we got the music playing uh, but shimmy this is uh, like is the, is the is your helmet really that important to you? Do you really need that helmet? Like, yeah, Yo, you know what I was thinking. <laughs> like every 10, 15 years, <laughs> every 10, 15 years, you Yo, you you, you got a pretty animated wide receiver. Last one we had was like T.O., right? T.O. and Mars, yeah. Yeah, so, but Mars wasn't even this anime. Like, yeah. It was just more like a T.O. move. So, like, you always got you always got a couple of them. And it's like, personally, I'm like, all right, the NFL got to try to work with A.B. at some point because he's one of their prized possessions, especially the wide receiver. He's the best yeah. wide receiver in the league, one of the best players in the league. Yeah. You kind of have to maybe work with him. What I was thinking, maybe just allow this man to wear his helmet and plays that already are in the league and then just implement it for the, the rookies and ongoing drafts. You know what uh, I mean? It should the, be mandatory for them to wear it. The, and they 
would, but then it's their collective bargaining agreement won't allow them to. So that's on the players' fault. But yeah. at this point, it's like because every player that you know they had their helmet that whatever they they got on board with it and they was just fine. But he just keep going. He's like walking out of practice upset because of the helmet. The GM is like, listen, this it's either he's all in or not. And this is all over a helmet. That's my thing. Helmet. I t- yo, some people are just partial to certain things, and yeah. some people are just very weird and very superstitious. D- yeah. This he's, is- he's probably never had, without going wood for him, he's probably never had a neck or head injury in that helmet, maybe. He's, he's had a concussion oh, I, before. I, I, maybe one, but, you know, he probably feels just comfortable and safe in that helmet. I don't know, bro. Yeah, th- this whole right. thing is just it, it's I wear just jerseys, crazy. though, not helmets. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy that this is, this is still on going you got you know he hasn't played in preseason he hasn't fully practiced uh, in any of the camps so, like he's been to practice he's been out of practice and it's like it's like bro come on now the, the, way, the way I look at it give it up you gave me your best shot I even applauded you last week for the <laughs> for the shot you gave and you can get a helmet to form any hairstyle that you have he got like four at this at this point in time. So he's like, going for the predator look now. Uh, like he he got you know he got yeah, it's it's a bunch because you didn't even see like the front of it. He got like. a fade. He got dreads. He got yeah. Ah! But, yeah. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, we got ghosts in here. I have no idea what this is, but um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on back there. But <laughs> Well, this is what you get after the whistle. You just have stuff happening. I think, yo, I thought that was a cat. But yeah, but AB as a professional man, you sign a contract, do what they ask. They're not asking you to jump off a bridge. Yeah. Get a new helmet. L- L- You'd be all right. uh, that makes no sense. I yelled that. I'm still joking about <laughs> <laughs> What? He love use distractions. So I just try to um, roll with it. <laughs> uh, Baker Mayfield. This guy, um, Baker Mayfield, has been. You know, you know, I'm not this. I'm not the biggest Baker Mayfield guy, but uh, he had a GQ interview. Uh, it wasn't his comments weren't as crazy as people made it seem to be about the Giants quarterback. All he said was he's shocked that he was shocked that the Giants picked Daniel Jones with how high they picked. But I'm like, you and everybody else, you're not saying anything new. But I mean, people were shocked that he went number one. So I mean, anything in the NFL should have shocked you. But the thing with Baker Mayfield is. Like he, I don't know. He people somehow let him just say anything, but the guy hasn't performed. He hasn't like you haven't done nothing really in the league yet for you to just be talking. You know, he said this is just confidence. This is just who he is. I'm like, you already called out one of your players because he wasn't showing up to camp, and I think that player got traded because he was in the uh, contract negotiations or something like that. Then you had the incidents with the wide receivers. You yelling at the wide receivers. It's like, yo, man, <laughs> yo. I totally get what you're saying, but he plays for the Browns still, so I don't really think they're really paying much mind. It's kind of like if he was in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, he got shrunk and was screaming, you wouldn't hear him because he plays for the Browns. They don't make no noise yet, so it's like you're really not see. You're kind of just blowing on dead air because your words don't really hold any weight because you haven't done anything. So it's kind of like letting your little brother run his mouth, I guess. And the thing is, he should have learned his lesson from co- from college when he in the college football playoffs when he started. He was talking crazy to Georgia after they scored the touchdown, doing all these things, and then what happened? They got they ran him out the building. You would think he would have been humbled by that, and now you're in the league. Well, the NFL anytime will humble you. As no matter how good you think you are, the the NFL will humble you because you got guys that you know. <laughs> These guys, they got families and stuff. They ain't going to take nothing from nobody, especially, like, a, a young quarterback. So it's like, I mean, you need to, <laughs> you need to like, relax. So. And it's only a matter of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's only a matter of time before somebody does either pull his card or he presses the wrong button. Yeah. And it'll probably happen in the locker room. The, the lock, Definitely probably most of it was like locker the room, locker room. Uh, it'll happen everywhere. But the, <laughs> the Browns hype, though, I, I, I don't get it. I don't, I can't jump on board with the Browns hype. They're like they got their Super Bowl favorites. They got, and I'm just like, bro, these dudes. We <laughs> live we live in a world where people just jump on any bandwagon. The peanut gallery would be driving it, and anybody's jumping on it. They don't even understand what they're even riding. Like pause, but you know what I mean, like. It don't make no sense. If you want the wild card, I even got them playing the wild card. You know what I mean? To get to the get to the playoff. That's as far as I got them going, really. So, 
I, like, I don't even think they were going to make the playoffs, to, to, but, to be honest with you. They have a whole lot of talent. I just don't trust their coach, and I don't trust their maturity because – we know Odell. If uh, any time he'll 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 be fighting the kicking net, and you know Jarvis Landry, he got him and Odell are kind of the same. Still got some issues. I can't do it. No, no, he did that on purpose. <laughs> Pages, clearly, Page was out of control. I lost my train of thought and forget the Browns. Uh, we're going to move on to the, <laughs> to the Patriots. They had their second preseason game. They won 22-17 to against the Titans. And this quarterback, um, Stidman, he's, this guy's been pretty good. He, he was um, 14 for 19, 193 yards and a touchdown. Uh, had a good outing for the Pats. That's two good games in a row. He might be fine for that. Backup quarter, backup role. I mean, yeah, he's young. He's young enough to do that. He's being productive. I didn't see this game. I seen the last game, and he was, you know, semi dual threat. He was running a little bit, but yeah. he can get the smart yards, and he's smart. Yeah, he makes yeah. good decisions. And the two guys I talked, we talked about last last week. Um, it was him and Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers, he had six catches, eighty two yards. So this guy, he might be, he might be a starting wide receiver for them because they're. I mean, Josh Gordon's coming back. He's been reinstated. Don't know when he's going to actually get back on the field, but he, he'll be back. But, you know, there's, op- there's opportunities for him, and, and they, he's been impressive in the, in, the, in the preseason so far. He's been making plays, and uh, Damian Harris this game, 14 carries, 80 yards. Nick Brousset, he had a touchdown, but, you know, 19, nine carries, 19 yards, two yards per carry. That's not going to do a lot. But, you know, some of these play- Patriots players, you know, they've been – They've been impressive. You know, Pats, they know what they're doing when it comes to draft picks and I want to say tr- trading and signing guys. So I'm not worried, man. Yeah, they got a they got a preseason game tomorrow against the Panthers. I think we might see Brady in this game because the third preseason the third preseason game is kind of almost like a dress rehearsal for some of the starters. So we might Brady hasn't played in the first two preseason games. They, so. they, they still play four? Yeah, they still play uh, four. I thought they were trying to like shorten it to like – Two or three. Yeah, they are, but they probably got to wait till the next collective bargaining thing because ah. I think it's up. I think it's up next year actually. Okay. So in a couple of years they'll change it. But yeah, they um yeah they got the Panthers tomorrow at, at Gillette Stadium. So two two games the Panthers and then they got the closing for, with the Giants on the 29th. So the that the last game is pretty much who's gonna make the team because the starters are the starters probably won't even dress up for that game. Man. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, other preseason games. Kyler Murray had a he had a tough outing in his uh, <laughs> preseason games. He was like he was three for twelve, I believe. Three for eight or three for twelve. He thought for twelve yards. He was just he he looked he looked very uncomfortable out there. The there was no protection. He he really couldn't get in the rhythm. And once again, there was no protection. So. Uh, by the looks of the, by the looks of their offensive line, he he's gonna have a long season. He's a, he was three for eight for twelve yards, sacked twice, and was running a whole lot. Definitely at his size, just because he's so little, he needs protection. He can't even see over people. He needs that time. Like it's not like you know what I mean. Like he can yeah. just see somebody. Like he needs time to be able to see everybody because he's so small. And that's the unfortunate part about it. But I think they'll figure it out. Yeah, they'll figure it out. It just won't be this year because this is going. Definitely won't <laughs> the, be. the way the way their offensive line looked, it's woo, It's going to be tough for them. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a tough rookie year for for them and for him because I mean. And man. one thing, I hope he keeps his head because he's not used to losing. No. Like in like his career. Yeah. He lost like what two games his whole career or something like that. Something, yeah. something ridiculous. So. Yeah. Keep your head, young man. Yeah, because yeah, he's going to be running for his life a lot. And, you know, it takes a toll. It takes a toll on you to be getting hit constantly every game, especially a quarterback. You just, I mean. And this is going to be new for him because he wasn't one of them guys that was really always getting, he barely got touched when he was playing college. So. Yeah, and in college you could uh, you could kind of avoid people. Mm-hmm. You could you could scramble and lose. But in the NFL, you got defensive guys that run 4-4, four, 4-5. Four, four, so it's like, uh, man. You, just take this. <laughs> you go out the pocket. Point. You you think you got a first down, and you might be <laughs> you might be seeing stars afterwards. So. Exactly. Uh, good luck, Kyler. That that offensive line is who horrid, horrid. <laughs> and lastly, the Cowboys and Rams. 
preseason game. This was a good one. We're, we're mainly talking about this because of the nonsense with the Cowboys happening. Uh, the Cowboys won this one 14-10. Uh, Dak play, played a few a few um, a few snaps in this game. They you know some of their backups played the you know their the backup running back I forget this guy's names. Pollard or yeah Pollard he had five carries, forty two yards, eight yards per carry and a touchdown. Uh, good outing for them, but I mean the Cowboys they still they they need to get Zeke they need to get Zeke back there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they're doing. It doesn't make any sense. One of the best running backs in the league. One of your best players on your team, just pay the man. They pay, well, they they did play Jalen Smith. Yeah, what, what they, they gave him a five year extension. I think he get like sixty seven mil, sixty five, sixty five mil, thirty five million guaranteed. So you want to? I mean, defense wins championship. I understand because this guy, he's coming off. He was, you know, his football career was in jeopardy just a few years ago because he tore his ACL in okay. college. It was his last year of college. He still got drafted high, but I mean, you haven't paid. You haven't paid Dak. Well, you offered Dak, but he uh, he refused. You have, you haven't paid Zeke, but you got the money to pay this guy, but you can't find the money to pay your best offensive player. Unless they unless they're doing something where they're paying, you know, you got a little bit of money, a little bit of money, and give Zeke all the money. But I don't know how much money they have left because they they throw out a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, they, but I, but right. I, to be honest with you, I don't know why that because I mean third. 35 mil, that's that's pretty high for 35 guaranteed. That's pretty high for a linebacker. But my goodness, I need, get the contract done with Zeke. There's only like a couple weeks left in the season. Everybody everybody except Jerry Jones knows that Zeke is the key for them to winning the Super Bowl. And then Jerry Jones was raving about Pollard's eight carries for 42 yards, five carries for 42 yards as if he's going to be the next big thing or he's going to be able to replace what Zeke did. But it's like, dude. It was going up against backups or guys that are trying to make a make a roster. Like don't yeah. make it don't make this seem like he was going up against the first team defense. Like Jerry Jones made it seem like he was going against the first team defense, and then when they asked him about Zeke, he's like Zeke who jokingly, but it's like you don't joke like that. I, and I seen online when he was saying he deserved the right to joke with Zeke. No, you deserve the right to joke with a man after you pay him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't joke him about his money. You joke after you pay him. Yeah. Like, come on. You I know. And, uh, Zeke didn't find that funny at all. It's like. I wouldn't either because I'm not paid and you over here joking. Like, and I'm waiting on you to pay me. Like, uh, yeah. About a guy who <laughs> rushed for 42 yards against backups. Against guys who probably won't even ever play it down in, a, in the regular season in the NFL. And so it's like. But, 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 you know, Jay's been around for so long. I think he's just toying with the media to a certain extent. One of them things is like, bro, you know I'm going to pay the man. But I'm, I'm hoping that's the case because anybody in their right mind would just pay Zeke. But they won't be playing around this much. I'm telling you, the Botox is messing him up. It's yeah. messing up his thought process. Like, I don't, he, had a, he had one too many Botox injections. Bro. Like, that's just, <laughs> come on, man. Don't look like the Riddler soon. Right? Yeah, like he got he, he got mouths to feed. Yeah. I don't know how I many if he has kids, but he got family. That mother, that he got his own mouth. He got <laughs> Jerry Jones. Pay the man. Stop being <laughs> <Rare>. cheap. <laughs> <Rare>. <laughs> Just pay him. I almost said something that probably would have got us in trouble. I ain't gonna say what it's I was all, about to say. It's all good. I ain't gonna say. Trust me, I do always help me. Yo, what <laughs> dance was that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to start uh, doing that. The, the San Diego Chargers just lost one of their premier defensive backs, uh, safety Derwin James. He got a foot injury, and he, he's going to miss three months. And this is a bad hit for their defense because this guy, he was kind of like a borderline all-pro. And I think it was their best defensive back, and he's going to be out for a while. And we'll see that guy to like, maybe October or You know something. what they say. Next man up. But, but I don't know if there's any replacing that, though. I mean, you're going to have to put somebody there. So I don't really know, like, what, what they're really going to do. I don't know who their backup is. Uh, so I don't know either. I, I, I couldn't tell. Any, I saw his name. It was like Phillips or something any like free, that. Any free agents out there? Nope. That might, oh, nobody's still nah, unsigned? No. Nah, ain't, ain't, no, ain't no free agents out there. So you, oh. you're replacing the guy. He had three interceptions at the set as a strong safety. 75 so 75 total tackles, 13 pass defense, pass breakups. Like, he had 105 total tackles, 3.5 sacks. I mean, that's a lot of production for a safety. It is. And you just can't pre- you just can't replace that. Well, hopefully, you know the rest of the defense could band together and just kind of make up for the loss. 
that's, 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 a, that's a big loss, though, but yeah, they, that, they that can is. try to band together and make up for his production. It's going to be tough, but they might be able to. And depending on who they get to replace, who knows? It might be some guy that breaks out this year. It might be. Well, their, their offense look, so seems like their offense is going to have to take a, a lot of, score a lot more points because um, they're, they're going to have a, a few issues on defense. Um, just, uh, But they still haven't signed Melvin Gordon, so that, that's another thing. Yeah, that's another thing. So, yeah, this is a team that was super bad. You know, they had high Super Bowl hopes. A lot of – a lot of – a lot of players saw them as one of the teams to, you know, be in contention for a Super Bowl. But you lose your best safety, you lose your running back, you got a, you got the father of nine, Mr. Mr. Don't Pull Out, Philip Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you. so it's how you pull out the, the, the pocket. No. <laughs> but um, honestly, you have to pay Melvin just because like he's gonna relieve pressure off your quarterback. Yeah. This is just simple football that even I know. I, I don't get how these people up there don't get it. Like, just pay these players that are doing commercials, they got endorsement deals, sneakers, and stuff like, they got all this because they're nice. Pay them. The NFL's weird. It's the only sport that refuses to pay people for produ productivity. I mean, the NBA overpays people yeah. mediocre players. Yeah, they do. <laughs> oh, man. And, and, you know, you got guys in the NBA who can barely score 10 points getting $100 million contracts, and you got guys in the NFL who, got, who are all pro, all conference, and they can't even get a deal. It's like they... <laughs> The, the NFL, I, I don't get that. It starts from the top, man. And we know how the top feels about the employees. Yeah. Yeah, terrible. Um, last last NFL news. This is just going right back to the Colin Kaepernick thing. So, Josh McCown, he was retired. He retired. So, he was working for, you know, looks like a drug on. <laughs> Definitely like drug on. <laughs> he looks like drug on. If he dies, he dies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so he was retired working for ESPN as an analyst, and then the Eagles called him because they need a backup. So he signed with the Eagles for a one-year deal. Mind you, this guy's 40. Now, there's a 31-year-old quarterback out there who better product, better NFL career than Josh McCown, more productive than Josh McCown. He can't even get an opportunity to like, show what he got. They're not even giving him an opportunity to show what he got, but they're going out of their way to get guys who are basically, they're done. They don't want to play no more, but you're bringing them back because he's like, are you going to give me all this money to just sit around? Fine. I don't blame him for coming back. If you're going to pay me that Yo, much, I'll sit I ain't mad for coming back. Yeah. It's just a slap in the face. Like, that's like, this is the big, like, that's disrespectful. Yeah. With Jerry Jones, with Zeke, ain't even disrespectful yeah. what's going on. With Colin, like, it's the ultimate disrespect. You yeah. got guys that are damn near laying at home on their couch. And, yeah. Just getting up, all right, let me go. Like, you serious? You ain't worked out in a year. And they sign him. He, I'm sure he's been working out. I'm sure he's in good shape. Yeah, he's, I'm, sure, you know, I'm sure all that. But come on, man. Yeah, he literally just retired. And, you know. Yeah, like, but he's. But my thing is, basically, when guys retire, they're done. He's 42. Like, he's. He's old. He's older. Like, he's old. I'm sure he don't want to pay. But, I mean, I ain't stupid. If somebody want to give me some money and I'll. All I have to do is be a backup. And, and, it's, and like I said, you're not you're not saying like Collins should just be signed. You say yeah. get him in an opportunity. Let him at come least. in, like, work, yeah, see what he got, yeah. and you know. And if it don't work out, it don't, don't work. work out. That's all people have been saying. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You got he got the opportunity, it didn't work out. But that, for to not even bring him in for a workout, nothing. That's just like okay, <laughs> y'all. All y'all saying that. You'd want him on your team, but then when it's time to come for you to sign him, and it's like, oh, we don't see that, we don't see how he can help us, or he doesn't fit what we're doing. It's like, and you think this forty-year-old quarterback that was on TV last week fits what you're, what you're doing? Like, come on now, and they should know better because their quarterback has been injured the past two years. So you're gonna, your young quarterback got a little injury problem. So you're gonna bring in an old quarterback who's, you know, who any moment could just. I, I tell some of the kids, it's because you got a million dollars, I'll make you a genius. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm still waiting for somebody to overpay me for something. All right. These All people, right. these people in these positions. Yeah, are terrible. Some brainless. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins, this guy just can't catch a break. Nah. He can't catch a break at all. So, he tore his ACL during a workout. That's the worst, too. It was during a workout. I think it was like pickup, though. 
Oh, I seen the clip. I seen the clip. Oh, it's pickup. It, lo- it looked like pickup because it seemed like it was a bunch of people. Okay, you know okay, I mean? okay. You were driving to the lane. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. When I read it, it said it was he bumped knees during the workout or whatever. But I yeah, mean, he was working out. Yeah, it could have been. He's working him out. <laughs> getting in the works. But yeah, it sucks for him. He got because you know the quad injury, the Achilles injury, now the ACL, and it's like man. I was thinking to myself like the um the Achilles. That happened, but the quad injury, I felt like he might have, they might have rushed him back too soon because if you, if you, if you view then that summer, tear your ACL, you must have been relying on that other leg a little more than you should have been. And like, yeah. he's almost seven feet tall, yeah, almost 300 pounds. That's a lot of force, you know what I mean? And I felt for some reason, I could be completely wrong with science and all this, but the bigger you are. If, at that size, I feel you probably need a little longer healing period yeah. compared to somebody like me or somebody like you. Yeah, he definitely should. Like, he like, definitely should not have been playing in the NBA Finals. He, I think he. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew. It. I think he, he just wanted to move. Play. Yeah, and the, the way they were killing him. And it's too much pressure. Run. Too much. Yeah, too yeah. much body on them little legs. Yeah, he should have been protected. By, he should have been protected, but somebody should have protected himself from himself. Like, Honestly, that, that was yeah. You are correct but, with that. Cause, cause he wanted to get out there, but it was like I mean he had moments, but it was still like watching him. It, it was hard to watch him play. He could barely move, bro. Yeah. And now for this to happen, especially you going to the Lakers, you know, we got LeBron, you got you got Anthony Davis, him and Anthony Davis playing together once again because they did play well together in New Orleans. Like, Definitely, they, they, they should have stayed together. Yeah. So it, it, it just sucks for him. It sucks for him. But I think this is also. All them years in Sacramento, too, man. It was like oh, those wasted years in Sacramento because he kind of got to do whatever he wanted out there. Yeah. So. Some, some say also, like, he might not be – some say it might be karma. He might not be the best person. But my thing is this might humble him a little bit to realize, like, you know what? I just need to enjoy my career. I don't need to chase no rings. I don't need to worry. Just whatever opportunities I'm getting, just enjoy my career. You yeah. know what I mean? And if the rings come, they come. Yeah. But just be, be better, Boogie. Yeah, be better, huh? See, get see, better. See you in 2021. Yeah, no, 2020. Yeah, see you in 2021. Really? That's 20, my guy. Maybe like 2020. Fall of 2020. Yeah, yeah. Get better. Yeah. Uh, Royce White. Woo. <laughs> Royce White. I, I know everybody just saw the clip of him saying what he said about Jared Dudley and Melo. They, they saw that little clip. But there was more to that interview. If folks watched that full interview, he was talking a lot more. He was talking about mental health, mental health, and he was talking about his experience um, playing college basketball and his own, you know, because he had a fear of flying. People saying that's why he's not in the league now, but he he addressed that 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 was never the case of him flying. It, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. You got Dwight Howard out there. That's not Royce White. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know, we watched the interview interview last night. I like how he speaks because he's honest. He's not shying away from any criticism that might come his way because yeah. we live in a world where people are so worried about the criticism they get be, for being honest. Yeah. Just be honest because honesty is always the best policy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he also addressed, like, coming from where we come from, honesty is easy for us in saying that people in higher up in positions are so used to lying and doing things a certain way that they don't even know how to be honest anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was cool. Like, I know a lot of people that didn't like what he said about Jared Dudley and Melo. I mean, some people would say, yeah, Melo time, Melo's time is up, and some people disagree. But I think, I mean, Melo just, Houston screwed Melo. I think Houston screwed Melo. For them to just put him on the shelf after 10 games, I mean, if you do that and you're an owner of another team, you'd be like, oh, if – it's not working out in 10 games with them. I, I don't want him on my team. That's kind of like how I see it. But, I mean, some, I mean, if you're LeBron, you should, like, you know, yep. But it's business. Melo's not going to call LeBron and ask for help. No. It's because Melo's Melo. LeBron should definitely reach out because they, they will work well together for one. It's not like you're just helping out a bum yeah. who's your friend. You're helping out <laughs> for them Hall of Famer who's also your friend. Yeah. So it's like, man, that man should be in the league. Stop doing this to this man out at in least, the public eye because it least, just looks bad for the NBA person. At least just give him an opportunity. Give him an opportunity to actually, you know, prove himself again because it's like I think Houston that whole Houston thing OKC it's like the OKC experience they never tried to make adjustments because it was just like Westbrook George 
Melo stay in the corner. We'll we'll kick it. We'll give you the ball in the corner. And then it was that was that's never been Melo's game to just stay in the corner and be a spot up shooter like that. So OKC never made any adjustments to those three guys. They did after Melo left. They they figured out oh, Paul George is the better score is the best scorer out of out of everybody. Let's get let's make him be the main scorer, but the focal point of the offense. But OKC never made the adjustment. And Houston they was just too quick. Too quick to give up on it. Yeah, man. They just and he went Dan Dan Antonio Dan at Houston. Yeah. Dan Antonio, whatever. Then he then he played for him at the Knicks too. I think I believe so. Yeah, man. That I feel there's some. I feel like behind closed doors, there's yeah. something with yeah. them too. Like for you to just do that to Melo like that, and you yeah. know what Melo could give you. Yeah. For you to do that, it's, that's that's. Uh, another, another thing that Royce White talked about was mental health. The, the mental health issue that the league has yet to address. You know, because we've seen some players. To have like some uh, some mental breakdowns. I mean, Kevin Kevin Love. I remember he had he had an incident. Where he was, it was just like anxiety, and he just had to take a break. It was another player. I forget who had had a little one. Uh, the Demar Derozan. He talked mm-hmm. about his, his mental illness. So he talked about that and how the league should address it. But <laughs> what he said about the lady in the NBA P, the NBA P, that was kind of fun. That was kind of messed up. Cause that was kind of messed up because it was like it would make it seem like. She didn't earn her way. Oh no, no the I way, what you're the way he the way he said it, the way he addressed it, it seemed like he 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 made it seem like she didn't earn her way to that position. It was just like, oh, let, let's pick you. Yeah, I don't think he was knocking like just her education and all yeah, that because yeah, yeah. he didn't knock her masters. Yeah, he knocked somebody else's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he just said like she's kind of like the one they just put in place. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's kind of like the puppet for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I told like, I, I totally got what you were saying yeah, though. But. but Good interview, nonetheless. Don't just watch that full. Watch the whole interview. It was a, it was a good interview. It was, it was, you know, no filter. That's what we like. Yeah, man. Very, very, very competent too, by the Com- way. Yeah, very. He went to Iowa State. My brother graduated from there, 2009. Cyclones. Word up. Yeah, my aunt too, and my cousin. Word up. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't go. I went there once. Lakers are interested in Dwight Howard and Joe Kim Noah. You know, with with Boogie going down, they need a big. They don't have a big right now. I think I don't know if Javel McGee still on the roster, but I'm not sure. But Dwight Howard, Joe Kim Noah. Dwight Howard was a good back. He was a good NBA player. He was just a clown, and that was that's my only issue with Dwight Howard. He like he was having a Hall of Fame career. And then the, you know, he wanted to leave Orlando, go, be in the big. He wanted to be like Shaq at too much, like go to LA with the bright spots. Then he was dealing with Kobe, and everybody knows Kobe's not the easiest person to deal with. Then you go to Houston, and then you go this. It's like this is just a whole lot with Dwight Howard. Then Dwight Howard got tattoos, and Dwight Howard is, I like to yo what. Some people just take some time to find himself. He's kind of been growing up in front of us though. He came in the league at like what 17, 18 years yeah. old. So like all his all that ridiculousness is kinda of like a young man growing up. Like literally in front of us. Like so I think he I think LeBron and them might be able to save Dwight a little bit. I think he still has some he's still got something in tank because he can not nah, he can he can play defense, Bev. he can rebound. That's all they need him to do. That's my point. Like <laughs> I think it. they'll be able to be a productive center. And then you got Joe Kim Noah. He don't got to be no crazy guy. He just hustles. You need a, a yeah. guy like that, garbage yeah. man. Why not? Junkyard dog as what's his name was was it once? Yeah, I, I forgot, forgot his, his name. name. I forgot his name. Yeah, too. whatever. Hoyas. Yeah. Oh, Jerome. <laughs> Jerome yep. Williams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, the, that should be it. I think the the Lakers, yeah, they need a big bad. Dwight Howard just need to stay away. From him. He just <laughs> stay away from social media, man. Definitely <laughs> stay away from that. We seen it. I don't want to say it, but. Ah, <laughs> uh, lastly, Ty Lue agrees to deal with the Clippers. He's gonna be the top assistant for Doc Rivers. What the heck does that even mean? Being the top assistant. Um, you just. Doc- you're just like there's the, like eight assistant coaches on the. I guess she is the guy he talks to first, <laughs> and then you talk to other guys down the bench. <laughs> I think Doc Rivers got like four top assistants at this point because. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. But yeah, <laughs> I, I guess this is like the cat and mouse game that the Lakers and Clippers are playing since Lakers wanted him, but he declined. Now he's with the Clippers as an assistant. I don't know, man. He was with Doc Rivers in Boston. Years ago, true. Yeah, ten True. years ago. So they they're familiar with each other, but 
I mean, good kudos to him for getting a coaching gig back in the league there, getting overpaid. I'll which is uh, something I aspire to happen to me. Definitely. Get, get overpaid. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all the NBA we got. Uh, so we got my man J.R. Gamble in plus one. He was a writer for the Shadow League. He does baseball. He writes baseball and everything baseball for the Shadow League. Uh, you see, hear how he talks. It's hilarious. Oh, we're about yeah. to hear him. Plus one. J.R. Gamble. Then we're going to come back and wrap this thing up. Start the discussion. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to another edition of a Plus One interview. Today we got a special guest from the Shadow League. We got Mr. J.R. Gamble. How you doing, sir? Not much. Not much here to talk that baseball. We're talking some baseball. You know, we got 10 minutes with you, but first we got to start off with my Boston Red Sox, man. What is happening with them? What has been going on with them this season? Well, you know, they, they had that slump, that post-World Series slump, where last year everything went perfectly for Boston, from the pitching to the hitting, especially the release pitching. You had some performances from guys like Evaldi and um, – other guys that were unsung heroes for you last year, and this year those things just didn't pan out. And, that, and that's baseball. You know, you need the perfect storm a lot of times to win a World Series. There's been teams that have had the best teams, won the most games, and still didn't win the World Series. So I think they're having a little letdown. Last year was magical. Everything from, you know, Cora becoming the first Puerto Rican manager to win a World Series, and Mookie Betts' 30 30 MVP campaign, how Jackie Bradley all of a sudden found a bat. In the playoffs, so they went against all metrics, all statistics, and Boston was able to, you know, have a magical year. And it's a little different. You have, also you have some injuries from the Yankees and some other people that uh, help Boston run away with the division. Uh, but it's different this year. Very different. And in their last 15 games, there were something like three and 12. It seemed like the problem with them wasn't there, wasn't the hitting. They were getting, they were getting decent amount of runs. It's, it's a problem that's been that everybody saw knew was coming during. The season was pitching, and everybody knew they should have addressed the pitching during the off season. But it seems like their pitching, their bullpen, has really let them down this season. Yes, they have, and in Boston, what, tw I think ranked 22nd in the league in pitching. And I said, if you want to see baseball and the teams that are going to go to the playoffs and do well in the playoffs, they're usually in the top 10 in pitching and hitting, especially pitching. Look, you know, look at the Dodgers, look at Houston, Cleveland, Tampa, all these guys are either leading their division or, you know, in control for the wild card. And they have the best pitching staff, even in St. Louis. Um, so, yeah. The pitching failed. Like I said, last year, you got, Boston actually got lucky with their pitching, and a lot of guys performed above their, their baseball cards. So um, it's one of those rebound years you have to deal with. They're not terrible um, this season. It's just they're very inconsistent, and they don't seem to have the same uh, power squad to advance as they did last year, especially with how much better Tampa Bay and the Yankees look this year. But they're still in the wild card hunt. They just have to really turn it around. And like you said, find some consistent pitching. At this point of the season, we don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. And you know, one thing that bothered me is when they had a players only meeting a couple weeks ago after a game, and that's never good in the middle of the season. Yes. Yeah, Never good, but the Mets had the same players only meeting, and they've gone on a tear. They won, I think, 15 of the next 16, and they're right in the thick of the wild card race in the National League. So it just depends on you know, how those things affect you. When you have a players only meeting in the middle of the season, that's usually a sign of desperation, and it's either going to propel the team to a win streak, as it did with the Mets, or it's going to just, you know, spell more doom as it did with, with Boston. It can't work all the time. But like you said, it is, that is a bad sign, yeah. usually. But it works for yeah. the Mets, who are only two games out of the wild card right now. So let's talk about the playoffs. Two teams in general who have been red hot. I think they they both got clinched their 80th victory last night. The Yankees and the Dodgers. What what is it about these two teams that has been, that has them playing so well this season? Well, both 
of these teams have ownership, one, that are willing to spend money. The other sense, Magic came to the Dodgers in 2012. They basically opened up the coffers and, and you know, they have an endless money pit trying to get to this World Series. And uh, they made it the last two years under Dave Roberts, and they're looking to, to finally get over that hump. So they have a lot of money spent. They have a lot of marquee players. And, they, you know, they control the market in that way. They even had Manny Machado for the end of the year last season, but couldn't work anything out with them. And actually, they needed him, need him, as you see. The Yankees, hey, the Yankees are the Yankees. They're always in it. They're always going to be competitive. Mm -hmm. It comes down to their pitching staff. And if they have stoppers that are going to perform for them and elevate their game in the playoffs, you know, offensively, the Yankees basically have no equals because they're not even playing their marquee all-stars. They have unheralded guys like Cameron Maven, you know, Shella, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Talk, Michael Talkman, guys you've never heard of performing at all-star level. Yep. So um, it all comes down to pitching for the Yankees and the Dodgers too because as well as their pitching is done in the regular season, guys like Clayton uh, Kershaw or Legendary, he's come up short yep. during the postseason. So they're going to need some guys that have some career years, some Madison Bumgarner type performances, some Justin Verlander 2017 type performances to uh, get over the hump. So as dominant as they've been because they have the most talent day in and day out throughout the lineup, plus they have very formidable regular season pitchers, it's really going to come down to how these guys step it up in the postseason. And that's why I tend to give Houston an edge. Yeah. Over both of these teams. Yeah, speaking of Houston, they definitely they won the trade deadlines by trade deadline by a lot of uh, according to a lot of people by that, some of the acquisitions they made. How dangerous is this team? Well, if any team that's won the World Series in the last two seasons and has just a stockpile of, of the greatest young players in the game, from George Springer to Michael Brantley, Jose Altuve, uh, Guriel. Uh, Korea, I mean, it, it's endless. Yep. Uh, they probably have more talent in the lineup other than the Yankees in baseball. So now that they've added Granky, they have Cole, they have Verlander, who's always reliable in the clutch. Mm -hmm. Hey, if if they can, you know, if, if their um, relief pitching holds up, yep. I still have them as the favorites because I know Verlander what he could do in the postseason. Not sure about these Yankee pitching. Not too sure about the Dodgers pitching as far as spectacular performances in the postseason. Yep. So Houston's dangerous. They're very dangerous. I say they're the number one team in baseball right now despite what the win totals say, particularly entering the playoffs. Because, you know, Cole and Verlander, they can, they can do it anytime. Yeah, once, once you get to the playoffs, anything happens. Uh, yep. And lastly, before we get you out of here, if they want to find your work, where can they contact you will they, will, will, or where can they find it? Oh, definitely. They can find me. I'm a deputy uh, editor and senior writer and baseball specialist at www.theshadowleague.com. S H A D O W dot com, the Shadow League dot com. You can also catch me on Twitter at Fanalyst One, S A N A L Y S T One, and also Instagram at the Gambler Twenty Four, where I post my stories and uh, my cultural perspectives on baseball. You can also catch me on Instagram at Black Baseball King, where I specialize in African American baseball culture as well. Hispanic baseball culture. All right. All right, JR, thank you for taking the time to come out to call in and speak with me. Uh, you have a great day. We'll definitely talk to you during the playoffs and World Series and all that. You have a great day, sir. And we are back. We want to tell you, we want to thank JR Gamble with the funny picture that he sent me, man. <laughs> What did you say? He looked like he was about to say you what? Four knockout Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely check out his stuff on the Shadow League. Check out all his uh, stories on baseball. Pretty good stuff. All right. We got going to run through some of this stuff. College football season is among, to, is among us. Season kickoff this Saturday. They got two games on slate. What we got? 
Battle of Florida. We got Miami versus number eight Florida, and this is interesting. My, Miami's not ranked, which is shock, which yeah, you know, I, a little surprise that I they're ain't not. That. Yeah, a little surprise that they're not ranked because they got they got some guys coming back, especially on the defense. They got some they got some linebackers that uh, projected to go high in the NFL draft. But uh, I think the question with them is quarterback. That's always been the question with the U. Yeah. And I'm biased, so, you know, I feel they should be ranked top 25 every year, like Michigan. But they aren't, so we'll see. You know, their defense, they always got a defensive play. They always got a yeah, running back that's decent. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? But quarterback's <laughs> always been the issue with them. Yeah, they always put guys in the league as, a, you know, defensive guys, especially. Mm -hmm. they got a whole, there's a whole bunch of defensive guys from the U in the league. But, yeah, I'm looking at their roster right now and the quarterbacks. I'm just like, ugh. Uh, you got a sophomore and Tate Martell. You got Pey Peyton Matocha. And you got Kosi Perry, who's a sophomore. So you got two sophomores and a freshman. It's going to be interesting. I don't know who's. I, I haven't looked all this up yet of who's going to actually be the starter for Saturday, but they're young. <laughs> they're young at the most important position. Yeah, I mean, hopefully one of them guys can figure out just how to be consistent. Don't have to be you no know, incredible quarterback because the last one they had was who's Testa Verde. The last quarterback. Who <laughs> Testa Verde. Damn. Not like the last one that was like nice, nice. Like they had the one, they had the one um, Dorsey that won the chip. I mean, but he wasn't Testa Verde. No. And so. he had all that talent around him. Dorsey well, wasn't good. There was... <laughs> I'm never going to knock a national champion, but, but he wasn't Testa Verde. Yeah, so. he wasn't Testa Verde, and he ain't have to do much. All you had to throw it up to Andre Johnson, Kellen Moore, and, yeah. hand it off, Frank Gore, Willis McGahee. <laughs> Trust me, I know, bro. Yeah, the <laughs> list goes on. <laughs> the, the list goes on. So, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're saying. This Florida team, this is a team that some projected they might sneak into the college football playoffs. Right now they rank number eight. They got – a lot of talent. They were good on defense last year. Had a whole lot of defensive play. They got an uh, All-American defensive back. So th this Florida team, I don't know. Florida's just weird. They're like a weird team. Like, I don't know. It's like it's their offense they run. It's just so blah. Yeah, and I think we're so used to Urban Meyer still. Cause, yeah. Because when I think of Florida, I'm thinking Tebow winning. And even, I, then you see him play, it's like, hold up, that's not Florida. Yeah, so. even, even Florida, they're still trying to get over um, yeah. Urban Meyer because I think this is like, I think this is like their, they're only like third or fourth coach since he left. So they've never actually, well, not he left, he kind of quit on them. But well, nobody that, stuck since. No, nobody, nobody talks about how he quit on them. But you know. <laughs> It's another story for another day. Another reason why I think Urban Meyer is the scumbag, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll talk, talk about that another day. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's it's like you know when you got all this transition and you can't keep a co you can't keep a head coach or you can't be consistent at head coach. It's gonna be like, all right, you guys are gonna be in turmoil. And they're in the top and they're back in the top ten. But let's see how it plays out because you know being in the top ten, you don't always finish in the top ten. You just finish unranked. And, and weren't we saying? I, I was talking with somebody. It might have been might have been you. Saying that like being in like the back end of the top ten is a good thing because yeah. you lose early in the season, you can crawl your way back up compared to being up top and losing. Definitely. All right, and yeah, we'll have more on college football. There's a, those on. That's only the only game this weekend. There's another game, but that's not important. So, um, oh, UFC. Uh, Dan Daniel Corm. <laughs> this dude, Daniel Cormier, got the brakes beat off him. Mm, he got the brakes beat off of him. Oh, I, I saw it. I was like, oh, for a guy that talks so much trash. And for yeah. that to happen, that just just look at him. He's asleep. Yeah, he is, man. He is. And I just seen they had this little documentary on him and what he went through and him always coming in second place and yeah. finally reaching his goal. You know what I mean? And I was kind of rooting for him just in general, just hoping he does well with his career. But ooh, yeah. I think this fight's coming on. Like on regular TV this weekend, yeah. so I'll probably check it out. Yeah, um, y'all can watch Craig's show for all this UFC stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know? we ain't gonna give too much. <laughs> we don't do all that, but I just wanted to point out that Cormier got the brakes beat off him, and yeah, that you know, for a guy that's always in second place, it's this that's, that's what happens. <laughs> Still, <laughs> sorry. Was this for his title? I think so. Oh man, sorry. Yeah. You know, he had that little one title reign, and then John Jones beat the brakes off him. And, yeah, you know, man. They've been going back. They're always going back and forth, and he always loses to John Jones. And I don't know. 
and then tries to challenge him again and gets the brakes beat I off. I think he's done trying to fight John Jones. I'm just tired of getting the brakes beat that, off. He said, that the, he said it, you know, you lose, you're 0-2 against somebody. There is no rivalry. No, there isn't. <laughs> there really is. That's ain't. just bullying at that point. Yeah. Duh. And, and lastly, <laughs> some local boxing news. Friday at Encore Boston, they got some boxing happening. We got Lin Guy in there, Kyrie Todd versus Alex Sandro from Brazil, I believe. Yeah, Brazil or, or so. Uh, it's time, this is Kyrie's like first fight in a while. He, he's been out for a while, but he's back on it. But you know, we wishing him, wishing good luck. I just do think he like a model right now, though. <laughs> That's what boxers do, man. <laughs> they just take a lot of pictures. <laughs> And sweat. Come on, Kyrie, man, get it together. <laughs> uh, but g good luck to him Friday. You know, you, you got to come back here, you know. Come back here. Let's talk. After the fight, after the flight, kill it because we can't talk to you before it. Um, but good luck. Uh, good luck to all the fighters. I'd go, but I got stuff to do. Man. Definitely good luck. I ain't trying to go back to Encore again. There's too much traffic over there. Too much traffic, and I might leave there broke. Yeah, that too. Um, <laughs> but they do have a good buffet. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they do. All right, on that note, we are we got through this show despite Pedro and his craziness back there. Uh, what he was doing. How <laughs> <laughs> this guy next week will have a shirt on. I hopefully. Hopefully he'll have a I shirt on will. and not wear green. We had Mac over there. <laughs> Mac was in the background just chilling, enjoying the show, just trying to figure out where all that noise was coming from. Uh, make sure... He was he was assisting. He was he was giving advice. Not right. Also, we might have a new after the whistle logo. Y'all can't see it, but it's you, drawn. You told you got to color it. Yeah, we got to color it. Uh, we out of here. Happy belated birthday to my grandma. She old now. She was drinking this weekend. Sure. <laughs> <laughs>